स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया to my next case uh, my next case that is the case third so my next case is uh, is the case where f is completely a function of explicitly a function of x and y prime so there is no explicit dependence of y on the integrand f so in this case my functional will have the following form g of y is integral from y0 to y1 f of x comma y prime dx okay and then if we recall my euler lagrange equation involved partial derivatives with respect to y and partial derivatives with respect to y prime so the partial derivatives with respect to y is going to vanish because there is no explicit dependence on y in this integrand so in the, that case so in this case my euler lagrange equation equation reduces to reduces to the following simple form partial f partial y prime uh, is equal to a constant c1 right so that can be very uh, quickly derived from the euler lagrange equation now one example that comes right away is the example of geodesics on the surface of a sphere well the geodesics on the plane is nothing but straight line and that falls in the case 1 uh, discussion in case 3 discussion is the geodesics on a sphere this is one very nice example okay so let me just recall in in our first lecture i had introduced the functional for the geodesics on a sphere so let us recall recall from our first lecture that that my geodesic or my path functional we are trying to minimize the path of a curve lying on the surface of a sphere right so my path function l of u comma v now we have two parameters involved is an integral from t0 to t1 of the square root of u prime square plus v prime square sin of sin square u dt where these derivatives u prime and v prime these are the derivatives taken with respect to the parameter t so then well this integrand uh, we reduce this integrand to a slightly more convenient form by no, by taking another set of uh, variables let us say that let us say that my variables u is substituted with theta so instead of u i am going to use the variable theta these are all dummy variables right and instead of v i am using the variable phi right so in that case in that case my my integral becomes j phi is integral from theta 0 to theta 1 square root of 1 plus uh, phi prime square sin square theta and d phi d theta where this phi prime this phi prime is nothing but d phi d theta so what we have assumed is theta is our independent variable and phi depends on theta right so uh, so we have removed completely removed the parameter t so instead of working in the parametric form we are now directly working in the form of the two variables theta and phi right so so let me call this let me call this boxed expression as 3 and let let me now so again notice that in this particular integrand we only have a function of uh, theta which serve as which serves as x so theta is my x and phi prime is my y prime so this particular integrand is only a function of of x and y right so which means 
that I can directly use this boxed form of Euler Lagrange. So, using using this boxed form the using 3 I see that my extremal is going to satisfy. So, I am going to directly plug my small f. So, this is my this is my small f in 3 I see that I see that the expression reduces to phi prime sin square theta divided by 1 plus phi prime square sin square theta right and this is also equal to c 1 which is the constant. So, next the next set of steps will involve solving this boxed let me call this another expression uh, let me say that this expression is this equation is 1. So, the next set of steps will involve solving this equation 1. Uh, so, before we do that notice notice that the quantity in the denominator uh, the quantity in the denominator is certainly uh, certainly uh, bigger than the quantity in the numerator right. So, uh, it cannot so the quantity in the numerator cannot exceed the quantity in the in the denominator because the sign is not sign sign function is bounded above by 1. So, we are guaranteed that the quantity in the denominator is bigger. So, what this says implicitly is the following it says that my constant on the right hand side notice that the constant if this particular quantity is less than 1 right which means that the absolute value of the quantity on the right hand side is also less than 1. So, I have that that c 1 is less than 1 right. So, which means I can replace I can replace I can replace c 1 by by let us say a quantity which is bounded above by 1 replace c 1 by sin alpha. We will soon see why we are doing that and from here we let, let me rewrite my uh, equation for the extremal we see that sin phi. So, phi prime sin square theta divided by uh, whatever was written in the denominator uh, that is equal to c 1. So, I am just recalling here. So, this is now instead of using c 1 we have now replaced with another constant and let us separate out phi prime completely from this expression we get that phi prime is sin alpha divided by sin theta times square root of sin square theta minus sin square alpha. Okay. So, then the next step will involve integrating phi with respect to theta right. So, so let me just write that step. So, phi is integral from theta 0 to theta 1. Uh, so, notice that since we are using using the limits theta 0 and theta 1. So, let me just change the variable theta with another dummy variable zeta right. So, so my integration will involve integrating this particular quantity sin alpha d zeta divided by sin zeta times sin square zeta minus sin square alpha plus a constant of integration let me call this as beta. So, beta where beta is nothing but phi at the original point the starting point theta 0 right. So, so that is that is my constant. So, then once we integrate well I am not going to go through all the steps of the integration because that is part of uh, uh, the students who have done multivariate calculus, but uh, let me read uh, write down the final answer after integrating we see that after integrating my phi plus beta I have now taken beta on the other side right phi plus beta of cos of this angle is equal to tan alpha divided by tan theta. So, after after integration after integration we get the final answer which looks as the following and then we can further simplify uh, by opening up this cos a plus b using the cos a plus b formula we see that this is equal to cos beta uh, well cos phi cos beta minus sin phi sin beta is equal to tan alpha divided by tan theta which is 
sin theta times cos theta, right. So, if we now transfer this on the left hand side, we see now notice what is the new expression now. So, I am going to very carefully write the left hand side. This is sin theta times cos phi times cos beta. Let me just club these first two terms minus sin theta times sin phi times sin beta. So, let me just club the, the second of the, uh, the first two terms of the second expression. So, this is also equal to tan alpha cos theta. Notice that recall, recall, uh, recall the parametric form, recall the parametric form, form of points on sphere. So, students should recall the parametric form of the points on sphere th whose x component is nothing but r sin theta cos phi, r sin theta sin phi and r cos theta. So, x is r times this, y is r times this and z is r times this. So, which means, which means that if we multiply throughout by r where r is the radius of the sphere we are talking about, we can rewrite, let me call this, this new expression by by 1 prime. So, we can we can now rewrite 1 prime as follows. We can rewrite in Cartesian coordinates, Cartesian coordinates that my e equation has boiled down to the following expression x cos beta minus y sin beta is equal to z tan alpha, right. So, we see that, we see that uh, where x, x, y and z, they lie, they are on the sphere, they are on the surface of the sphere, sphere surface, right. And further x, y, z, they satisfy this equation of a plane, which passes through the origin, because x equal to 0, y equal to 0 and z equal to 0 certainly satisfies this equation. So, my extremal. So, so, the moral of the story is that the geodesic or the extremal solution lies at the intersection of the sphere and the plane which passes through the origin, right. So, geodesic lies on the intersection, intersection of the sphere, intersection of the sphere and the plane the plane passing through the origin, right. So, it lies on the intersection of the sphere and the plane passing through the origin and that can only be if I if I were to draw a sphere, let me just you know show the diagram quickly. So, we, here we have a sphere and here we have a plane, we have a plane which cuts the sphere and it passes through the origin and then the intersection of this plane and the sphere can only be be an arc which is the equator of the of the sphere which is the great circle right so that is that is the great circle right so the great circle is is one of the uh, equator uh, circle with the largest diameter right so that is the geodesic on the sphere okay so then let us look at another example which falls under this case very interesting example that is how light travels through different medium. So, so uh, well, so students who have done science in class 12th, they must have recalled the Snell's law and the Fermat's principle of geometric optics. Namely, if we have different media, we have that the light follows a path such that certain relation is satisfied. So, students in class 12th are taught certain relations on how the light travels through different medium. In today's lecture, I am going to show it using calculus of variations as to how to get that result. Okay, so, so the result is as follows. So, the Fermat principle says that light, light travels along a path See, nature always follows a principle such that 
it obeys the minimum energy, minimum time, minimum path and so on. Right? So, in this case the light is going to travel along a path between two points such that the time between the travel of these two points is minimized such that the time taken is minimized. Okay. Okay. So, so, so to set up this problem, let us say that the speed of light in general, the speed of light depends on the medium in which it travels. So, it dependent, it depends on the media. Let me denote the speed of light by c of x comma y. So, it depends on, so I am doing a problem in two dimensions in Cartesian coordinate x and y. So, let me say that in general the speed of light depends on both the coordinates x and y. So, the Fermat's principle says the following, the Fermat's principle is nothing but the statement that I have just written. It says says that light, uh, uh, the light path, the path of the light will be, will be a minima of the, the following functional, right. So, the functional that we have is the time functional. So, the time functional is the integral of the arc length or the length of the path travelled by the light divided by the speed of the light, which is the time. The, so, the integrand of this integral is nothing but the total time taken by the light uh, to travel from point x 0 to x 1. So, rewriting this arc length in the form of the x y Cartesian coordinates, you see that this is also equal to 1 plus y prime square divided by c of x comma y d x. Okay. So, then in order to further solve this problem, let us use a simplifying assumption. right? So, I want to show the solution to this problem. So, let us look at a simplified scenario. So, let me call this as a special case. So, the special case is we have c of x comma y is given by let us say 1 by g of x. right? So, I have used a simplifying assumption that the speed of light purely depends on the x coordinate of uh, x uh, component of the coordinate system. So, in this case my time, my time functional becomes integral from x 0 to x 1 g of x times square root 1 plus y prime square d x. Right? So, what we have is let me let me uh, call some of, so I have to rename some of this expression otherwise we are going to lose track of these expressions. Uh, so, let me notice that now uh, this assumption has completely made this functional as in such a way, defined this functional in such a way that the integrand is purely a function of x and y prime. So, this is falling under the category of case 3. So, we see that, uh, let us go back few slides, I am going to use the result which is this boxed result, we are in the case 3. So, my Euler Lagrange is going to satisfy this boxed result given by 3. Okay. So, let me, let me use, use the boxed result 3 to see that my, my uh, extremal is going to satisfy the following expression g of x times y prime divided by 1 plus y prime square square root which is also equal to constant which is equal to c 1 right. Okay. So, then let me just uh, you know rewrite this expression we see that this is y prime divided by 1 plus y prime square which is c 1 divided by g x. Now, notice that the quantity on the left hand side will most necessarily equal less than equal to 1, 
right and uh, so so which means that well let me just uh, take the square and it's better it's it's uh, clearer that way so so taking the square we see that y prime square y y prime square divided by 1 plus y prime square is equal to c1 by g of x whole square notice now that the quantity on the left hand side is less than or equal to 1 right so which means that the quantity on the right hand side will most well this is not less than equal to but strictly less than 1 so which means that the quantity on the right hand side is also strictly less than 1 and this helps when we write y prime purely as a function of x we see that we see that y prime of x is equal to 1 by square root g of x divided by c1 square minus 1 right or or we see that y of x is equal to integral we integrate this expression notice that this quantity is greater than 1 because the quantity here is less than 1 right so the square root is well defined so integrating this expression i see that this is what we are going to get so g square by c1 square minus 1 plus another constant of integration which is i define as c2 okay so then then the further integration of this expression is not possible unless and until we we know the exact form of this function g but we can go ahead, ahead and see some intuitive results we can still extract the physics out of this problem so so uh, well uh, before we do that we must mention the following well y is the extremal so we must have that we must have that uh, first uh, y has has at least at least uh, two continuous uh, partial derivatives partial derivatives that is the underlying assumption of the euler lagrange equation and uh, that is fine as long as the 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 velocity here defined by this function g is continuous right the moment we have discontinuities we have some problems right so let me look at the case so what i have just described is as follows so consider the fact uh, consider the fact suppose uh, let me draw the figure so suppose we have two media let us say we have air and we have water so just an example here right so we have two media and we have light which passes through we have light which passes through the first media and the light which passes through the second media and of course the speed of light in the first media will be very different from the speed of light from the second media which means which means that in this case c of x comma y will have will have discontinuities right either discontinuity of first order or second order and so on right so the speed of light is different from in air than in water and we will see that light travels very differently in the in the different media right so in this case now i cannot use my euler lagrange equation to solve the problem because the moment the moment the velocity has discontinuities the speed has discontinuity we cannot use our the, our underlying assumption of having two continuous derivatives of the integral will fail right so then so then we can still move ahead we can still move ahead so let me let me just uh, draw this problem a little bit more carefully let me so this is my horizontal let me say that the speed of light uh, this this path taken by the light makes an angle phi naught right it makes an angle phi naught and the path taken by the light in water in the second medium makes an angle phi 1 right with the horizontal right so so in this case what we are going to do is well of course there are discontinuities when we consider the problem with two media but in each of the single medium problems the the path taken by the light has continuous solution so we can definitely apply our euler lagrange equation 
in each of the media and try to combine the solution somehow. Right? So, the idea is as follows what we do is we break we break the problem into two problems break into into two problems we break into two problems with with boundary points with boundary points x star comma y star right so so let me call this boundary point as x star comma y star such that we we do a little bit more simplification such that my x star the x component of the point or the or the location the x component of the boundary point is fixed and i have movable movable y star right so this point so so moving the y star is going to change my angles phi naught and phi 1 but my x star my my x component of the location of the boundary is completely fixed right so in that case in that case my integral j of y which was my time integral can now be broken down into two integrals one integral from x0 to x star right and the other integral from x star to x1 right and in each of these integral the path of the light is a continuous function so we see that the path is 1 plus y prime square dx divided by the speed of light let us say the speed here is c0 and the speed here is c1 since within a single medium the speed of light is assumed to be uh, fixed and constant it's only with different mediums the speed changes right so let so which means that in the first medium let me call this speed of light is c0 and the second medium the speed of light will be will be c1 right so now we see that each of these integrals in the integrand of each of these integrals are purely a function of y prime so this each of these integral functionals individual functionals they fall under case 1 or the solution to or the extremal solution to these functionals are nothing but straight lines right so this this is all geodesic on a plane so this is the solution the extremal solution will be all geodesic on plane which are straight lines right so let me write away let me write away write the solution the solution y of x will be straight lines such that the first straight line passes through x naught uh, x naught y naught comma x star y star so let me write the equation of the straight line so x is less than equal to x star and x minus x star y minus y naught minus sorry y 1 minus y naught divided by x 1 minus x naught plus y star x greater than equal to x star and let me call this solution by an expression a by the quantity a so notice now we have completely so x naught y naught x 1 y 1 x star these are all fixed quantities except now we have we have just one variable y star one variable y star which is a variable of the problem to begin with and now the solution to this combined problem will involve minimization of this function with respect to this variable y star so which means my final solution to get my final solution we have to do as ordinary minimization or the multivariate minimization with respect to the parameter y star so explicit explicitly compute compute well we explicitly compute j of y and and minimize minimize with respect to with respect to 
the variable with respect to variable y star. Notice now we are not doing a functional, we are not doing a functional optimization, but we are doing an ordinary function optimization. So, we use the standard first derivative second derivative tests to find the quantity y star which minimizes our function y.